from CDs to iPods, internet downloads, or playing the hymns at church, music and electricity have been partners for over 120 years. Stephen Carroll of Wheeling plays to the congregation of the New Life United Methodist Church every Sunday on a virtual pipe organ he built. This idea started a couple of years ago with just one keyboard at my house and uh, sampler software where you can play pipe organ sounds with a keyboard at your house. So I got to thinking, why couldn't you design something that would be like a pipe organ to use in the church? We've called it virtual pipe organ because it's not really a pipe organ, it's virtual. I want to say this was a Hammond organ. Uh, we gutted everything inside and out, and that took about a week to get all the circuit boards and everything out of it, and designed the casing to hold two keyboards here. We cut a hole in here for a CD-ROM drive. The monitor is touchscreen, so when you touch any buttons on the screen, they respond. Uh, all the computer components, the hard drive, and everything is back inside of here. I think this is the wave of the future for the church. Electronic music used to have more of a strict definition in that you would hear a piece of music and there would be only electronic instruments or only electronically generated sounds. Now with this advent of digital software, you can have any sound any instrument, and sometimes you, you clearly cannot tell what is electronic or what's acoustic. So the lines have completely uh, blended for, for the betterment of music. Technology has given musicians an upper hand. Entire compositions can be changed with the stroke of a keyboard. Mark Farley is a coal mine engineer from Charleston. He's exploring these new frontiers that technology now presents. The helicopter coming in right now. You know, you hear that, you could record that as it is, recorded in stereo uh, onto a hard drive. One, the cool thing is you have laptops now, you have stereo condenser mics, you have miniature mixers, you can travel and go anywhere and gather sounds for use. I could record that helicopter and you could drop it 20 steps you could raise it 20 steps, you could pitch bend it sinusoidally on a sine wave, you can randomly bend it, and that's kind of an approach I take with music. I get these sounds a lot of times or, that you hear around us right now as we're talking, and I put them in music and put them in songs to where you don't recognize the sound for what it is anymore. It's more of a tone. The history of electronic music is a movement from hardware to software. Early uh, sound generating machines, oscillators and their filters and everything like that, were, were large uh, and you had to use uh, patches and patch bays. We no longer need hardware, we just need a computer. There are virtual synthesizers, virtual mixers. So the digital technology is the latest thing right now and it, it has the ability to completely control every element of every sound that the composer is working with. So in short, large bulky machines to, to digital software. It's only been within the last two or three years that I've uh, been able to get samples for computer libraries. And those are actual recordings of real instruments that you can play. So that really increased the quality a lot. That makes it sound a lot more realistic. I've been trying to create as realistic an orchestra sound as I can through computers. I decided to try to explore emotions in music. So I sat down and started to write a symphony. It's just symphony number one. It's, it was based on a trip to the ocean. The program for samples is called Giga Studio. That's pretty much a, an industry standard right now. It lets you load huge sample libraries. Some of them are over a gigabyte, and it loads them into your memory so you can play them in real time. And I record that into a program called Nuendo. It's by Steinberg. It's the same 
same basic program as Cubase. It's very similar to that. That records the audio, and then each track is a separate sound. You can adjust the volume and everything like that. If it wasn't for technology, I would have to write all of this music out by hand and take it to a real orchestra and have them play it. Um, I've never been one to write music down. I just play it as I hear it and go with it. I wouldn't, ha I wouldn't be able to do that without technology. Just hit record and start playing. I found an electronic community all over the place. Anytime you go online, uh, there are forums for people who write their own music. And I found there are a lot of people out there doing the same types of music that I'm doing. The internet gives you the ability to spread that all over the world. David Haynes is a DJ in Princeton. He goes by the name of DJ Kairos. He's used the technology of the World Wide Web to start a radio station, and his music reaches far beyond the mountains of Mercer County. I was surfing the net one day and, and found a site where you could uh, set up radio stations, and I had been looking for a way to um, get my music out to the public, and um, found the radio station. I figured, hey, you know, internet radio, that's the way of the future, you know, <laughs> so I just run all of my own music on there, and it's, you know, uh, it gives me a lot of freedom to do whatever I want with the radio station. This technology allows the creation of new music without people being in the same room. That's, that's pretty significant. There'll probably be in the future bands which people will never meet one another, you know? And they just collaborate that way. Why not? You know, not only games, but a lot of commercials are using it. So it is, it's, it's a growing market. Um, and obviously people like it because it's, you know, it's being used uh, almost everywhere now. All these elements are coming together and forming these new styles. There are styles for which there are no names right now. Anybody with a computer can create the same kinds of music now, so you really need to have an edge or something that lets you stand out from other people. I think right now it's the most alive music on the planet. I, I really think that. Not just because uh, that it's on my show. I've just discovered this stuff, and I think that uh, in... Uh, there are certain eras in which certain styles of music are the most alive. And I think that electronic music right now is the cutting edge. And it's the most exciting place to listen right now. I wanted to make music for having headphones on, you know, good headphone music. You can turn the lights off and listen to and hear sounds going around your head, you know, whizzing around you. I always like that kind of stuff. Everybody has a view of music in Appalachia, specifically West Virginia, as being banjo, mandolin, guitar. That's fine, upright bass. I like bluegrass too. Uh, I have some uncles that play bluegrass, but it's kind of hard being electronic, an electronic musician in West Virginia. You know, definitely outside the box here a little bit. Yeah, I tend to, I guess, dive into the music there when I'm working on it, and that's what I love about those monitors you know you have, or either a set of earphones or monitors, you can really, you're there in the zone when you're listening to music. Some people listen to my music, and I guess their kind way of saying, I don't like it, or that's not music, is, well, it's, it's a little bit weird, Mark. It's, it's different, different. Yeah, different's the word I get all the time. Well, it's really different. Music never stays in one place, it is always moving forward. You just have to kind of search around to figure out where that's going on. But right now, it's in electronic music.